Hi guys, welcome to A Cumbrian Lad Outdoors and welcome to today's video. Finally, finally, we're heading back up a fell. Best part of two months since I've been up a fell and I've been itching, itching to get back up. So I'm out again today with the Beauty Brothers and we're going to head up Haystacks. We're going to go past Inominate Tarn and Blackbeck Tarn, scope them both out and see which is going to be the best place to pitch up for that. Yeah, we parked up at Gatesgarth and we've just walked past the bottom end of Buttermere. We've had some helicopters flying around and some uh, paragliders jumping out and what have you. So um, hopefully we'll get another view of that further up. Hopefully they'll be back up again. That's where we've parked up just there. And we've walked that little path and up the first ascent. There's Andy. Um, and you can see there the two helicopters that have been flying around. I'm presuming it's some kind of filming, possibly for Mission Impossible or something like that. Uh, but that is just a stab in the dark. And there we have a view down the beautiful bottom here, an area which is fast becoming one of my favorite places to visit. We do have a lost dog in the area, Apollo. Hopefully we'll maybe catch a glimpse of him tonight and reunite him with his owners. So we are about a third of the way up to Haystacks at the minute. And we've just taken the opportunity for a little bit of a break. This, despite it being overcast, it is quite muggy and we are sweating a bit. We do just have the very tail end of Buttermere still in view. A cracking view of the spine of Fleetwith Pike. One of the best sunsets I've ever caught in my life on camera up there. Looking up the valley and the gill towards Warnscale Bothy and on towards Haystacks, which is where we'll be walking over to our destination for the evening. Just looking back from the direction we've came, you can just and so make out the bottom end of Buttermere. And we've just had another helicopter come past, so they must have had a bit of a lunch break and they're back out filming again, but we've just hit the boulder field. So we're just gonna chill here for five minutes and uh, get a bit of a water break. Yeah, it's another welcome water break. D despite it being overcast, like I say, it is quite muggy. So we're just gonna chill here and hopefully catch the, the helicopter come past again. Well, that's us through the uh, the rock bit. Um, it's a lot easier going than last time I was here. Um, I think they've pathed it quite a bit more, so that was a lot easier than I was in anticipating. We've hit the last little bit of flat before we uh, do the last bit of ascent up to the top of Haystacks. Nice little bit of flat to where we've got to. Totally lost the view of Buttermere for now. And we are just getting ready to climb the last little bit of ascent up to the top of Haystacks, which does involve a little bit of scrambling. Daz isn't too great with scrambling, are you? A bit dodgy, so um, I'm not sure whether we're gonna get much filming done on the way, but I'll do as much as I can for you. So let's crack on. How would you find that first scrambly bit? Not too bad, to all fairness. Not too bad. We have just hit a little flat spot. The Helio chopters are still flying around and we've now got Crummock Water and Ranadal Knots into view, as well as Buttermere. But there is a little bit more of a scramble to come just yet. We are almost at the top now. You can see the sea. I'm pretty sure the camera can just and so pick it up. Crummock Water and Ranadal Knots are now more in view, as is Buttermere. And another cracking shot of Fleet with Pike there. and just the last little bit to go now until we tap the top of Haystacks. Well, we've made it to the top of Haystacks. And I'll tell you what, those seven or eight weeks off the fells have absolutely ruined me. But we did it, we pushed on and we're here. Yes. We can just and so see the very tip of Enidal water. 
cracking view down the valley. Any view from this end of the valley, or any end of the valley up here is stunning. We're gonna class this as the cairn for the top. There is several up here, but this is the one with the views. Haystacks, done, boshed for the second time, but this time we're wild camping it. Looking back towards Haystacks, we have just reached Innominate Tarn. Absolutely stunning here. Look at this. Beautiful. And we've got Tactical Duck's long lost cousin. All right, mate. Nice to meet you too. So our path takes us just past Innominate Tarn and on towards Blackbeck. I think we're going to be uh, staying at Blackbeck. It looks a bit moist here. Um, so yeah, we'll crack on. We're just navigating the uh, the rocky path between Innominate Tarn and Blackbeck Tarn. How's that for a drop? We can still hear the uh, helicopters flying around. Flick this pike again. And we're heading that way. That's us here at Blackbeck Tarn, finally. We're all pretty tired now. It's been uh, been a bit of a long day, a long walk, especially after so long away from the fells. So let's have a look around, because it's a cracker. And we do have a cracking view right down the valley over Buttermere and Crummock. So hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll get a sunset. You can see the path that we've taken to get here. Look at this. Absolutely glorious. Looks like somebody else is going to be camping the night, but yeah, there's room for everyone. Glorious. What a perfect little spot for a camp this is. Blackbeck Tarn. After a hard walk, beautiful serene calm and all we've got to do is just nip up the way a bit there and we've got a perfect view down the valley for the sunset yeah tonight is new tent day so um a big thank you to daps wild camping on instagram go and check him out i'll put a link in the description he's a lad after my own heart gets out camping takes some cracking photos um, he put me in touch with a company called nightcap who have very kindly sent me their ultralight one man trekking pole tent so that's what i'm trying out for the first time tonight and i'm really looking forward to it i've been after a, a trekking pole tent for a long time obviously you've got your land chance and stuff like that but i've been on an hour in and obviously when i was offered this i was offered a few items i looked through them and it really drew my attention so i thought yeah i'll, gi I'll, I'll give that a go um as always it'll be an honest opinion i've not set it up before i've had a quick look through it just to make sure everything's there but um, I do get offered quite a bit of stuff online and I'm very, very selective about what I accept. I only accept stuff that I think will be worthwhile showing you guys. Um, so what we'll do is we'll have a quick look around the place because we've, we've, we've been sat having a beer, just chilling, show you where we're going to be camping um, and then we'll have a look at the tent. We have just wandered up a little bit from the path. That's where we first came up, just there. We have got company for the night down there beautiful with the sun dropping look at this helicopters out right on cue we've got daz and andy the Bewley brothers just sitting chilling <laughs> don't mind the hobbit feet <laughs> daz's words not mine so yeah perfect little spot do have a few other campers around the place looking for a pitch for the night absolutely glorious i've been using the osprey atmos ag65 for some time now and honestly that pack is so comfortable it makes a big difference but the reason i'm showing you it is inside this bottom pocket here is my entire tent and sleep system 
So inside there, I've got my tent, my sleeping mat, my sleeping bag, and my pillow. There we go. So blue is the sleeping bag. That is my pillow. That is the ultra light tent from Nightcat. And in there is my Cetus Summit Etherlight Extreme sleeping mat. Yeah, this is, this is the pack, the Nightcat ultralight one person trekking pole tent. Pack size is 27 centimeters by 16 centimeters and it weighs 950 grams. So ultra lightweight and it packs down really small as well. I've never set this up before, like I say, I have checked it last night just, just to make sure everything's there. I would recommend if you are heading out and you're inexperienced, make sure you set your tent up first so you know, know what you're doing. But I've researched this and I should be fine. So yeah, let's get it set up. First time setting it up, so let's do it. Inside the pack, you get the outer fly, the inner fly, nine pegs and all the guy lines you need to, to set it out. It already comes seam sealed. So yeah, let's get it set up. And also inside the uh, peg bag, you do get a puncture repair kit or a tear repair kit, I should say. Um, and unlike the others that you get with most tents, it's a decent size as well. Stakes are pretty decent too, nice and skinny. Four veins on it, so should do well at that. So what it says is just to peg out the four corners. So <clears throat> that's exactly what we'll do. And then there's one at the back. And then it's time to put the trekking pole in. And other than the side lines that need to go out, that's it done. So what I'll do is I'll just pop the side guys on and then we'll have a look inside. And what does really impress me about this tent is it comes with everything. They give you enough pegs, they give you enough guy lines, it comes seam sealed, there's no messing around. Tarp tent, if you're listening, you could learn a thing or two off night cat. Send your tents with everything that, that they need to set up. Yeah? So now that's all the pegs in, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go around and tension the bottom corners and then we'll have a look inside. I'll tell you what, it's quite big inside as well. It's good that. So that was really easy to set up. Proper chuff with that. And like I say, I've been looking for a a one person lightweight trekking pole tent for a while and obviously it's great to get stuff for free but you've got to be honest about it so so far i'm really liking this i've got it in the green but it also comes in khaki it retails at the moment for 138 pounds and 17 pence if you get your 10 percent discount when you click on the link that's going to be in the description the outer fly sheet is a 5000 mil hydrostatic head and is made of 15D silicone nylon. The bottom bathtub is 8,000 mil hydrostatic head, and that is 20D nylon cloth, and it's got a high density mesh to keep the bugs out. As you can see, the porch area is massive. The area that you put your guy line to is also your ventilation. You've got a little bit of mesh under there, so you've pl plenty of ventilation and that mesh is proper tight woven and it's an l shape zip so it just opens at one side let's have a look in plenty spacious in there 
we'll have a look at how long it is for me when I get in and get all my gear set up. I don't see any other. We have got a little bit of a pocket at the bottom end, but that does seem plenty spacious in there. Really does. Right, I'm going to zip this up because we've got some midges knocking about. And it's something that I hadn't noticed, but Andy has just pointed out we do have a loop on the top. So if you were in the woodland and you didn't want your trekking pole in there, you could actually um, throw some paracord or something like that over a tree branch if it was strong enough and you would be able to do it with the trekking pole as well. Yeah, that's the first look at setting up the Nightcat One Man Ultralight Trekking Pole Tent. And as Adam in the wild would say, yes, I missed the pussycat. Meow. Yeah, that was really easy to set up. I'm proper chuffed with that. Um, it seems really well made. Like I say, it comes with all the guy lines, all the pegs you need. It's seam sealed. Um, you know, it looks a cracking tent so far. I'm really looking forward to spending the night in it and I shall let you know my thoughts in the morning. And obviously, when I go to bed, I'll let you know what I think of the uh, length inside and the space inside. So for now, I do believe it's beer o'clock. We'll see you soon. Well, that's us all set up. Andy's in the Fox 2. Daz is in the Helm 1 Compact. Compact. Cracking little tent. Chris from the Height of Life has got one of them and they are a really good tent. You're quite liking that, aren't you? I'm liking it, yeah. I wanted something small, a bit more lightweight than the Torridon. Yeah. yeah. This is the one. Yeah, I reckon it, it looks a tidy tent, that. And I'm all set up fully in the Nightcat one-man trekking pole tent, lightweight. So, see to summit Etherlite Extreme with the OEX Leviathan EV900. I've got all my kit in there. It looks plenty spacious. The... Um, the sleeping mat and sleeping bag are nowhere near the head or the tail of the tent. So that's going to be plenty spacious in there. Usual suspects, a few beers, solar, OEX Solar X cook set. We're on the real termat beef stew for tea tonight and the Adventure Foods muesli. Tactical Duck is uh, fairly impressed with the new tent. If you know, you know. Now I have been having a look around the tent while my uh, drone footage has been downloading. And I tell you what, hand on heart, the stitching everywhere is absolutely on point. Everywhere there's been some stitching, you can see there, it's been sealed. Lovely straight lines. And again, anywhere it's been double stitched, you can see the circle of, of the, uh, the seal there, where the tie out points are. All the way around, the stitching is bang on and it's been sealed really well. Yeah, I think it's going to be a good night in the uh, in the new tent tonight. Really looking forward to it. Yeah, we're all set up and it's definitely chill time. Look at that. The magnificent Great Gable in the background. What a place to camp this is. We have got a few midges around and we've got the smidge on the Beauty Brothers and the Jungle Formula on myself. And trust me, neither of them taste so good. <laughs> Do you me? Um, but yeah, we're gonna get some food on, so I'll bring you back when it's food time. Right guys, I must apologize. Um, we've, we've had our food. The real term at Beef Stew was bang on as always, but I had my camera set up for the, for the time-lapse. So I've kind of made the decision that I need a second camera. Um, because while I'm taking the time lapses, I can't film. So, yeah, we've we've been sat around the camp just chilling. The guy that was uh, down by the tarns come up and said hello, and I had, a, had an awesome crack with him. Ex ex military guy, some awesome stories to tell. So, we are just getting about ready for bed. To 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 be honest, we've got one beer left. Um, so we're gonna go and enjoy that. So I will definitely bring you back when I'm in my tent for a bit of a natter before we go to bed. Well, that's me tucked up in my tent. As you can see, I'm sat up and my head is just touching the inner. But once I'm laid down, there's plenty of room. Um, honestly, hand on heart, I'm really impressed with this little tent from Night Nightcat. Really am. Me and the boys have had a crack at night. We've just sat outside talking, chat chatting away. Um, so, yeah, it's definitely time to get me, me head down. So, I shall see you guys in the morning.
morning, everyone. What another cracking night's sleep on the City Summit Etherlight Extreme. Absolutely loving that, Matt. Slept like a log. It is about half five in the morning. Um, we're all up. We're all needing to get back home. Um, got stuff on and that. So, um, yeah, really impressed with this little night cat trekking pole tent. I really am. Uh, really easy to set up. Um, not quite as much room in it as I'm used to, especially with the scarf. But, you know, it's a one-man trekking pole tent i can sit up in it in the peak no problem but when i was uh, getting up in the middle of the night to use my water bottle um it was a little bit cramped but it is what it is it's, it's a trekking pole tent so honestly i couldn't be happier with it to be honest we've got the moon rising just over there it looks absolutely awesome so i'm going to spin the camera around and see if i can get that on camera for you dazzy's helm compact one looking uh, rather sexy and all lit up in red And his Fox 2, as you all know, I love my Fox 2, cracking little tent, especially for the money. Look at that. The moon has just gone behind the clouds as I've turned the camera around, but very sod's law. Yeah, some lovely ref reflections on the tarn. Surrounding mountains are just silhouetting us. Some lovely pink salmon in the sky as well. Lovely colours. And really enjoyed my first night in the night cat trekking pole tent. Uh, there's only really one thing that irks me. And it's it's not really a negative, but I just think that the logo's a little bit large. And I don't know. I think they could do better. That's hand on heart, my honest opinion. I'm going to feed that back to them in a positive way. But other than that, they're going to be told they've got a cracking little tent. Look at those mountains silhouetted behind me. It's absolutely stunning here. But like I say, we need to get ourselves away early. So we're going to make a start tearing down and getting ready to get down the mountain. Well, that's us all just about packed up, ready to go home. Um, I'll give you a final look around the place because it's just stunning here. The mountains are still silhou silhouetted. We've got some lovely colours in the sky. Sun's starting to come up. We are going to be heading that way, up to the right, and past Warn Scale Bothy on the way home. Andy, he's just putting the final bits in his bag. <laughs> Cover up the full moon. Beautiful. <clears throat> Great Gable there's got its uh, cloud hat on. Absolutely stunning. You can see there where Daz has had his tent. And where my tent was. And Andy's. So we've left nothing behind there. My rucksack. Is just sat on the rubbish bag at the moment just to, just to keep it dry. The ground's absolutely soaking wet. Everything's soaking wet with um, evaporation overnight. But all the rubbish is in the bin bag or is going to be going in the bin bag. So as always, and as it should be, we will be leaving no trace behind. Right, unfortunately, it's time to go home. The worst part of camping, I hate it. I could just stay here forever. But it's been so good to get back on the mountains again after so long. And obviously great to have you guys along and watching as well. So I hope you've enjoyed the video and thank you very much for clicking on it. I really do appreciate it. So once again, until next time, stay safe, much love from a Cumbrian lad and the Beauty Brothers.